Good morning, good people. It's Clint again from Sharp Solutions, carpet upholstery cleaning, supply install and repair. Right then, so today we've got a little job. It's about an hour and a half work, if that. Um, we're in a commercial premises and the customers gave us a call to see if we could remove like a circular traffic lane. Um, that's all they want cleaning. Um, it's quite a large place. So this is like a door opener to the future. So some people might look at these jobs and say, well, it's not really big enough, you know. Um, it's only minimum price or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Some people have got a day rate. Some people have got a minimum um, job ticket that they'll go out to. Now, yeah, it falls in towards for um, our minimum job ticket. And I'm happy to come out on a Saturday morning when there's no one around me because this place is absolutely empty and do what, you know, an hour to an hour and a half's worth of carpet cleaning. They are carpet tiles. You can always see it better as well, the soiling level on a phone than you can the naked eye. It just shows up better, which is good. Um, I'm going to take you around now and show you exactly what we're doing. So, like I say, it's like a circular traffic motion like a rotation kind of thing so it's round here you can just see there's a little spot there that they want to do it now we come through this center little canteen into this main office which i'm not going to film because obviously um there might be people's private pictures and things like that. No names or anything else mentioned. So round here, we've got a little bit just here. And then back to this door. So we've just done a circle, basically. Now, the form and the method of cleaning today is going to be encapsulation. Now, this is going out to all newbies in the industry or let me, even veterans that have never kind of used encapsulation. I've been using encapsulation for a fair few years now uh, and I find it extremely good. Okay, now this soiling level, these carpet tiles, they say have been down about seven years and they've never been cleaned. So this soiling should lift very easily. And the reason I say that is because nobody is coming here with all different kinds of solutions and set soiling and stains and everything else. So it should be ready after a good thorough vacuum to then pre-spray with an encapsulation solution and then go over with a CRB. Now it's not a normal CRB, it's actually the Floor Wash 25. Now the reason I'm going to be using this is because it has the recovery tank in the back, okay? Now with an encapsulation solution, for those that don't know, what it basically does is when you spray it down, okay, and you agitate it in, it then crystallizes ready for post vacuuming so after you're done you can then vacuum it up vacuum the crystallization soil particles up now that was a tongueful but anyway um it's a great way to clean and over the years i've used all different kinds of products i've used solutions that come from america solutions that come from france solutions here in the uk and some from canada now I'm going back to one that I used um, a fair few years ago. It actually was a tester. Uh, I ordered their sample kit from World of uh, Clean Solutions in Cornwall. Um, and it is um, Hydro 202. So it says dilution rates, I think is 1.25. Uh, which is around 40 mil per litre. So obviously not having a large area to clean, I would get away with just a few litres here. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm gonna spray it down. Um, I'm just gonna give it a, le a wee little bit of time, maybe a few minutes, just to start actually attaching to the, to the, to the carpet and soiling. And then we'll, uh, we'll break out the floor wash and we'll agitate it. Um, the recovery tank at the back, I will be taking out, okay? Um, because I don't want to really catch the encapsulation on this particular job. I want to leave it in there for it to dry and crystallize. 
but it's a good machine because if you're ever doing kind of um, something that you did want to obviously catch, it, it's great for that. But first of all, uh, we'll be giving it a good thorough vacuuming. Now we're not doing this entrance mat here, but as you can see, um, it could probably do with a vac and sometimes, you know, for five minutes work to give it a thorough vac so that that's not then treaded in here, you know, um, I'll do that kind of thing. Now, some people might look at this and say, um, you know, is it worth doing it, especially on a Saturday? This is a big commercial complex and it definitely is because it opens doorways. It's like a little tester. These carpets, remember, they've never been cleaned before. So this is a tester to the rest of the building. Now, they haven't just got carpet tiles in here, they've got safety floor in vinyl, you know, and they've also got a real bamboo floor in the um, main area and the canteen. So they could be a prospect to clean as well. It always is visible to get your name in the door so that when they do need anything like this doing again they know where to come because you did a good job so stay with me guys first of all like i said we're going to be vacuuming it and then after that i'll run you through it right then so just before i turn on the vac a good thing for when you're encapsulating is make sure that your vacuum power is up to standard. As in, it's emptied or you've got a fresh bag and your filters are cleaned out. So obviously you can get its full potential. Um, there's loads of good vacuums on the market out there. And um, if they've got good suction power and filtration system on them, it really, it varies on what you want to spend. You can go all the way to the top and spend you know a lot of money on a good branded vacuum that performs fantastically or you can go and get something that performs fantastically but doesn't really come with a massive brand name uh, as long as it does the job you know so we turn the back on and it's slow it's not like we're gonna skip over the top to lift debris what we're trying to do here is lift the dry soiling so it's a bit of a slower action. It is ground in there, so you're not going to get massive amounts of that carpet tile. But I can hear loose debris going up there, so that's uh, a good sign. And all I'm going to do now is take this vacuum and go round the whole circle traffic lane and make sure that I've got thoroughly vacuumed. I'm going to speed this part up just so you can get an idea. Right then guys, so the pre-vac's done. Um, we're filled up and we're ready to start pre-spraying. Now then, um, with this, I've used no other chemistry at all, because obviously the whole point of it is this is encapsulating, so it doesn't need to be rinsed with anything. It will be vacked up when it's crystallized. Um, you can actually use bonnet cleaning with it, which is very good. Like I say, it was a few years back when I had um, a sample that I used, uh, and I actually used it in a domestic home and I found it was really, really good. It's actually what got me on to using um, quite a lot of different volume hydrogen peroxides because it just blew me away with what you can get cleaned with the right kind of stuff. I do believe um, this Hydro 202 has got like a polymer in it as well so that it actually keeps the carpet in um, better for longer afterwards. So it's almost like a, um, like a scotch guard kind of thing but it's not um it, it, it just prevents soiling as much so um that's always an added bonus quite a lot of chemistry on the market today uh, has got that kind of aft solution in so right we're going to start pre-spraying so that's the kind of amount i'm looking for Nice even fan out. I'm going to go all the way around. 
and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so here I am using the CRB and you can see straight away the difference. Making sure I go slow. Like I say, I've taken out the reservoir from the back because I want it to stay, I want the product to stay in the carpeting so that I can back it once it's crystallized. just gonna take a walk around and show you from the other side because sometimes lighting um, can throw you know the work that you're doing kind of thing and I really wanted to the naked eye is picking this up absolutely brilliantly um, it is a fantastic product I'm blown away to be fair um, just a short agitation and you can see if I come around to a different lighting angle you will probably see what the naked eye is picking up so um if i come around let's hope it does because there you go wow 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 and all you know you can see a very slight tinge and what's going to happen is by the time i've been around this um and agitated everything it will be almost crystallizing then. So um, we'll get the back out, but if I take a shot down to it now, can you see that line, that line of cleanliness? Unreal, absolutely unreal. And you know, the soiling level was uh, quite high to be fair. Anyway, I think I'm going to put this on uh, a little bit speeded up so you can get the gist of what I'm doing. Right then guys, that is it. After, um, agitating it in with the CRB without the reservoir tank in and then putting the reservoir tank in and I collected about half of the tank. Now then, so, you know, you could get away with that if I'm gonna to be totally honest with you. Compared to what it was, I'll put up the before and after pictures and most would say, yeah, you've done a fantastic job there, but not me, not at Sharp Solutions. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not 100% fantastic product and everything but i am going to pad cap it okay so what i'm going to do is use the rotary with an iron man bonnet and i'm just going to dip that in the solution and wring it out then i'm going to go over the whole lot and let's see what happens then in goes one iron man pad give it a bit of a dip and then wring that out so that there's no moisture coming out of it. You don't want no dripping moisture. Right then guys, that is me done for the day. Just uh, under a couple of hours worth of work. It's come up really, really well, as you can see. I mean, around that doorway there, we had a watermark where I think um, maybe the cleaner had knocked the bucket over cleaning the canteen there because that's safety flooring in there. And obviously it came out. Um, in the hydro 202 the hydrogen peroxide that's what would have kicked them watermarks out and uh yeah it's, it's done a fantastic job i highly recommend the solution um if you are kind of one minded and you only use hwe and you're wanting to get into other methods of cleaning 
um, and you're doing your research at the moment, then fantastic, because it can seem that the industry can be one-dimensional, and it's not the case. Um, I think when newbies get into um, carpet and upholstery cleaning, they're obviously taught with a machine that's almost foolproof to a point. Obviously, major things can go wrong. But yes, uh, turning on a vac, you know, pumping and sucking, that kind of thing, a lot of people stick to it. Now, it is the deepest form of cleaning, but it's not always needed or recommended. Um, you definitely wouldn't want to be going into someone's ass if you've got regular clients like I have every three months and using um, water extraction, rinse extraction, because believe it or not, what you've heard in the industry about it can't damage backings of carpets and blah, 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 um, it's all down to the technician. And unfortunately, that's where experience comes in. And yes, people with the experience could probably go in every three months, um, every other week probably, and do a fantastic job with no damage. But unfortunately, there is a lot of people out there that are just getting into the industry and they can have problems where they're letting out too much moisture for the machine that they've got, um, the vacuum power. It's not enough to suck it all back up. It can start to delaminate the backing of carpets, modern day carpets, which are three layers built up of an action back, latex glue and a primary back in. If too much moisture gets in between there, that's when delamination starts to happen. So I just wanted to touch on this. The other thing is, is be more versatile. The chemistry on the market today is that good that rinse extraction is not needed in every single situation. When I use rinse extraction, it's my first customer normally. Um, and the reason I use it is because nine times out of 10, they've had it clean before and you don't know what that cleaning company have used. So I like to rinse everything out, start afresh, and then they can have me in on a maintenance basis to clean their carpet. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I then basically come back with a low moisture method. Okay, I normally use products with no residue in, so I'm leaving no residue behind. Encapsulation is another one, like I stated before, um, I've used several different products over the years and they're all fantastic, but some do work better than others. I mean, this Hydro 202 from Nick at World of Clean Solutions is absolutely fantastic. And if anyone was getting into it, I'd highly recommend that you go and put an order in, do your research, um, find out, you know, what you need to be doing watch channels like mine basically and um, try and gain as much information as possible there was a couple of reasons that i pad capped this job afterwards because if you remember what we did was we vacked it then we sprayed down the hydro 202 and then we agitated it in with the floor wash 25 which basically did the job you know, um, if I was shifty, I could have got away with that, knowing that there's no residue in the carpet, it's all encapsulating. So when the cleaners come at night, they can vac that, and then crystals will then be lifted out of the carpeting, and inside them is little soil particles. But I didn't want to. Um, I just wanted to do a full job uh, for a couple of reasons, like I say. Number one was to make sure that there is, you know, um, no soil to very little. The reason I say that is because you will always get soil in out of a freshly clean carpet, no matter what method you use. You know, if you was to use the best truck mounted machinery in the world and you were to do the deepest clean, you know, someone could come in with a bonnet and a, and a rotary or an orbital machine afterwards and they will take soil in out of that carpet. A lot of the time with HWE, what happens um, if you don't try and get them fibres as dry as possible, as quick as possible, you get a tinge wick. So the next few days as it's fully drying out, and I say that because people seem to think and tell the customers with hot water extraction that, um, you know, it can be definitely uh, totally dry within a couple of hours, but that needs aided machinery like fans, blowers, that kind of stuff. You're always taking precaution to try and get the fibers 
as dry as possible, as quick as possible. But those that don't, what happens is that moisture starts rising from the backing of the carpet again. And you get like a slight tinging colour. It doesn't look as clean as when you'd freshly done it, you know. And that's just part and parcel. Even if you're speed drying it out, you get that a little bit as well. So what I mean by that is you're always going to get soiling out of a used carpet. The idea is to remove the visible soiling. And that I think we've done here today very well. So I'm going to stop banging on, but I like to throw out there as much information as possible, especially for the newbies or even seasoned professionals that have been in the industry a long time, but have been one dimensional. And all they've ever done is go from a portable to a truck mount and they've left out all the in between like low moisture cleaning and dry cleaning because they are exceedingly good in the right situation. It calls for it, in fact. So guys... It might be the last video before Christmas, as I am extremely busy, and it does take time to do these videos for you. So, have a great Christmas, guys, and until the next one, stay safe. <laughs>